duty, Sam. I knew you guys were right for the show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboys, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor, classically trained. Globe Theater and all that. Just set him up to do something funny and he'll handle it from there. Check. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script and it's really important to work it in because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to save the line. Me, me, hit me! All right, Max. Your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. I like it already. Can we take five? The Screen Actors Guild will break my knuckles if I say no, so go ahead. I shouldn't fool with the set while we're not taping the show. I shouldn't fool with the set while we're... I shouldn't fool with the set while we're not taping... Hey, bossy. I don't care if it is just a prop. I'm not touching that with my bare hands. We're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They're probably hiding a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! Goodness, who left this lying here? Hey! Let there Open be light. Open up! Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! There we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you got a... Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boys? This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck island. <laughs> and Rob's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army day. He said moon goo that ham. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Oh, super! I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Aha! Hmm, interesting. That's one way for it. Hmm, there's a familiar flavor. 
Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> this moo moo whatever stuff is really good. Uh, what's it called in English? Cow pie. <laughs> really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like... <laughs> I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my news. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Hello again. Hi. how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the soda poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? Hmm, I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make uncomfortable entertainment out of people's misplaced faith in their own singing ability. Oh, me, me! I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, Peepers. <clears throat> Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly like how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. What's with the pool of water? It's acid, Brain Freeze. Don't you ever watch the show? Is that your mug? No, it was here when I got here, last week. Ew. Can I look at these? Sure, take them. I've got them memorized. Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive. Well, well, peepers, you underdeveloped former non-psychotherapist you. What a treat to run across you again. I'm not sure if I ever properly thanked you for hitting me over the head recently. Repeatedly. No gratitude necessary. Just doing our jobs. Sure. How do you manage to hit those eardrum scarring high notes? If you're implying that I use any artificial vocal enhancements, I doubt what you hear is pure peepers. That's almost exactly what I would have said. Your lyrics have an intriguingly vapid quality. Did you write them yourself? Of course! Any similarity to lyrics from other wildly popular songs is meant as homage, not theft. I'm dying to know. Is there any truth to the rumors about lip-syncing on the old Soda Poppers TV show? We only did that on the released version. I'll leave you to whatever it is you're doing over here. Good luck!
I think I'll poke around and look for clues, or craft services crawlers, or both. If you poke up some crawlers, I want six. Last time we saw you, you and your diminutive former child star brothers were in the thrall of a megalomaniac hypnotist with bad hair. What have you been up to since then? Well, after you hit us over the head, repeatedly, our careers have taken an upswing. Clearly. Hey, being a judge on Embarrassing Idol is a tremendous opportunity. I'm feeling the magic already. What can you tell me about this contest you're judging? Not much to tell. People sing, we judge them. You want to know more, ask the director. We judges don't have to concern ourselves with operational detail. Tell me about the criteria you use in judging a singing contest such as this one. I'm a stickler for technical proficiency. Usually I look for a high note. Someone who can hit a really high note always impresses me. I see. If you'll excuse me, I've got some lines to color outside of. It's your life. What kind of perks go with this gig? Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by color? Ooh, craft services food. Have him bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes. Ugh. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine, but they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Can you eat those little cherry tomatoes? They're small. No! No tomatoes, tomato juice, tomato paste, nothing! Or I'll be out of commission for hours! Tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity! I'm voting for Peepers no matter what! He's my brother! The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add! I said I was sorry! Enjoy your judging. Catch you later. Uh-huh. Hey, can I try my pipes out on this thing? Go right ahead. Frankly, we can use all the contestants we can muster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Love has a thorny backside. <laughs> Howling at that drippy old hunk of food. Playing cocktail angst on my bassoon. 